Hello and welcome. In this video, I just walk you through the concept of sequence library with respect to system Verilog version of UV. As you know that to verify any design completely and to get 100% coverage, we need to write multiple sequences because one sequence is capable of generating one kind of transaction. And if we are defining multiple sequences, we may need to write multiple test cases so that in each test cases, we can start those sequences. For example, if we are defining sequence one, we can start that into a test one. Similarly for sequence two, we can start that sequence onto the sequencer in sequence two and so on. So if we have multiple sequences, we may need to write multiple test classes to start those sequences onto the sequencer. To avoid that uh, necessity of writing multiple test cases, we can use the concept of sequence library. So what is the sequence library? It is nothing but a collection of multiple sequences. So as you can see over here, sequence library will contain all the sequences, whatever we are defining. Sequence one, sequence two, up to sequence n. And if you see the syntax for that, it is like class of our own sequence library. You can give any name, which is extending from UVM sequence library. And as it is a parameterized class, we have to make parameterize with the type of transaction. And as it is an object class in the UVM based class hierarchy, we have to register with the QVM object details, factory registration micro, and its default constructor expecting only one argument. Along with this factory registration micro, we have to use tick UVM sequence library details micro. And then inside this default constructor, there are many, there are several methods to add sequence to the sequence library. One of them is to add type white sequence within parenthesis, the sequence name, colon, colon, scope resolution operator get type similarly if we want to add another sequence to this sequence library we can use this function called add type white sequence within parenthesis we can give the class name sequence class name followed by scope resolution scope resolution operator and get type and if we are defining an instance of, of sequences into the sequence library we can use add type white sequence and within parenthesis that sequence dot get type instead of this scope result operator. Okay. Now let me show you the code of that sequence library, how we can uh, use that sequence library if we have multiple sequences in our test image. So these two lines are mandatory. In order to get the access of all UVM macros and access of all UVM classes. Then this is the transaction class, class sequence item, which is extends from UVM sequence item. And here I'm declaring two properties A and B and making them as an end so that in future we can randomize these A and B properties. And using factory macros for registering this class with the factory and using field macros for that. So tick UVM object it is begin and tick UVM object it is in. Inside there tick UVM field in for A and B variables and some flags over here. All on means it will on all the properties or uh, all, all the methods that uh, if you want to print we can use print method in build print method. If you want to copy, we can use copy method, then compare and all. Then another flag is there, UVM decimal. So if we are using print method, it will print those thing in decimal form. And as it is an object class, it's default constructor expecting only one of them. Now the sequence class. So sequence one, which is extending from UVM sequence. And as it, as it is also a parameterized class, we need to make this parameterized with the type of transaction. And factory registration micro, object details, 
and stay fall constructor also expecting one hour and inside the body task in task we are creating an object for this request req so this req is an middle object for the transaction class and a start item and finish item in that we are randomizing and just printing okay and you can use tick uvm do which is single line micro which is capable of doing a job of this three line code start item randomize and finish it similarly for class sequence 2 same thing we are doing we are declaring an object of request class creating an object and randomizing and just printing now the sequence library class inside this sequence library which is extending from uvm sequence library parameterized with the type of transaction tick uvm object details factory registration macro along with tick uvm sequence library details and in the new construct we are using the method to add sequence to the sequence library as we discussed earlier and end class sequence library now the next class is a driver class which is capable of driving the stimulus to the duty but here just we are getting the transaction from sequence and just printing them okay so inside the run phase forever begin sequence item port dot get next item and just we are printing and just we are giving any random delay over here before finishing that so item before calling item done sequence item port dot item done. and ending the task run phase and ending class driver now the agent class is there inside that we can declare the driver and uvm sequencer and as it is in component class in the uvm base class hierarchy we have to register with it tick uvm component itils factory registration macro and its default constructor expecting two arguments the string name and uvm component parent and the build phase which is responsible for building all the lower level components so is just driver and sequencer we are building over here we are creating the object using factory script method and inside a connect phase we are just connecting the sequence item port of this driver to this export of this sequencer so the syntax for connection is like driver instance dot sequence item port which has a port dot connect within parenthesis sequence item export of this sequence and just ending a class agent now the environment class is there in which we are just creating an agent okay so environment class environment which is extending from uvm environment and just declaring the instance of the agent and as it is a component class we have to register with a factory registration component factory registration macro and this default constructor expecting two arguments and in the build phase just we are creating that agent using factory script and the test class is there in which we have to create this environment the lower level component and here we have to we have to create this sequence library okay so the instance for that is sequence lib seq underscore lib if we are not using sequence library then we have to create the sequences sequence one and sequence two here okay so as we are using that we can remove this sequence as, well. as test is also a component class so we have to use tick uvm components and its default constructor will expecting um, is expecting two arguments now in the build phase we have to create this environment then we have to create this sequence library okay so as it is an object uh, we, we have to provide one argument over here using factory script method we can create this environment and then this sequence library along with this we have to provide some additional information for this sequence library so what is that sequence library first is selection mode so the selection mode is nothing but the selection of library so we can use random selection mode so it will select the sequence randomly we can use random c cyclic so it will 
select the random and cyclic manner. So uh, until and unless completing of all sequences, repetition will not be there in this random cycle. Then another one is UVM sequence lib item, and then next is UVM sequence lib user. So we can define user define selection mode for this sequence log. So as we are using random cyclic here, so sequence lib dot selection mode, which is a uh, cyclic and random and cyclic. And we have to provide this minimum minimum count and maximum count. So the transaction which is sending to the sequencer, we can provide the count for that. So minimum is five and maximum is ten. You can give any number over here. Then we need to initialize the sequence library. So for that sequence lib dot in init sequence library, and just we are printing that sequence library in the build case. Okay. Now in this end of elaboration phase, just we are printing a topology. So it's not necessary, but to see what are all the components and objects our environment has, the test bench architecture has, and in the run phase. Of the test, just we have to raise raise an objection and drop an objection. In that, we have to randomize the sequence library. So, and then we have to start the sequence library onto the sequencer which is there in the agent of the environment. So, as you can see, sequence library dot start within parentheses we have to provide the hierarchical path. So, this sequencer we have to start the sequence library onto the sequencer which is there in the agent of the environment. And just we are ending the last test. And inside the top model, just within initial begin, we are just calling this run test method and providing a test class on test class name or under it. Okay. Now, if we run this code, we will see the output of this particular code. So instead of starting separate sequences onto the sequencer, in multiple test classes, we can write those sequences into the sequence library and we can directly start that sequence library onto the sequencer. So it will reduce the number of test cases writing. Let me show you <coughs> the output for that. So this print is from the sequence library print. Okay? So as you can see, this sequence library print be here. And this you can find the information like minimum count and maximum count. So minimum is 5 and maximum count is 10. Then the selection mode is UVM sequence lip random cycle. Okay. Now and the sequences you can see sequence 1 and sequence 2. Now this is a topology we are printing from the top class test. We can analyze it has test environment agent driver. The driver has this code and sequencer. Okay, then all the sensor. Now this is the sequence two, which is selecting randomly in cyclic manner. So first is sequence two. Here you can see. A and B variables, A is 3, B is 5. So at the driver side, you can find A is 3 and B is 5. Similarly, if it is it is selecting sequence 1, then A is 5, B is 14. So simil, uh, same thing we will find at the driver side, 5 and 14. Then the next is sequence 1, A is 8, B is 0. Then at driver side, A is 8, B is 0. Similarly, for sequence 2, you can verify. For sequence 1, and so on, you can verify. So instead of writing multiple test cases and starting sequences one by one, we can directly write uh, those sequences into the sequence library, and we can start those sequence library. Now, as we discuss the way of adding sequence to the sequence library in the sequence library class. 
there are other several ways okay so let me show you another way also as you can see here we use this add type wide sequence to add this sequence to the sequence library there is one another way let me show you that code also first we'll comment this code So the difference here is inside a sequence itself we can use that micro to add sequence to the sequence library. So for that what the changes we have to do let me show you. The things all the things are same just the changes I will show you. So in, in the sequences, we can use this micro pick uvm add to sequence lib. Pick uvm add to sequence lib. This sequence one we have to we want to add into the sequence library. Okay, so the sequence library, if you see, this is sequence library. The same, just we are commenting this add type void sequence. Okay, instead of these lines, we are using directly this micro to add this sequence sequence add to sequence library okay. so this sequence particular sequence length will add to this sequence library similarly for sequence 2 we have to use the micro then if we, we are using this micro pick uvm add to sequence library then we have to define a type def class on the top of sequences type def class sequence library and we after defining this we have to define this class sequence library and same thing okay. we can avoid these lines as we already added those sequences onto the sequence library using macros and the entire code is similar no change over here. and if you run the code then you can find the result same okay something value uh, some value will be different only okay let me show you the output so if you analyze the output you will find this print is from that sequence library print and this is from the top print topology then as you can analyze here sequence 2 which is taking this random value 3 and 5 for a and b so at this driver you'll find 3 and 5 this sequence one again okay so a is 5 b is 14 at driver you'll find same value 5 and 14 now it is taking sequence one again a is 8, B is 0. Now it is taking sequence 2. Okay. A is 8, B is 14. And you drive at driver you can find those. Similarly for all sequence 1, then the sequence 2 and sequence 2. Okay. So this is what the concept of sequence library. So if you want to avoid writing multiple test classes to start sequences onto the sequencer we can use make, we can make use of this concept of sequence library so inside the sequence library we can define multiple sequences and we can start this sequence library directly onto the test class by selecting a selection mode okay so with this i hope you have understood the concept of sequence library and also i hope you enjoyed this video so thanks for watching thank you now you can play uh, with this code uh, by changing this selection mode and minimum maximum count so that you will have the clear understanding. So thanks once again.